breaking news now on the president's formal, former personal attorney, Michael Cohen. Our reporter, Kara Scannell, has broke the news. She is with me uh, to explain what it is. Also with us, CNN legal analyst, former federal prosecutor, Renato Mariotti. Uh, this is significant. Walk us through what you've learned, Kara. Well, Poppy, we've learned that Michael Cohen, um, Trump's personal attorney, has indicated to friends and family that he's willing to cooperate with this federal investigation. Uh, now, part of the reason for that is that he's become angry, as he's told his friends, uh, about the way that President Trump and his new attorney, Rudy Giuliani, have treated him. And that anger and that treatment has made him feel isolated and more open and willing to cooperate as part of this investigation. We learned earlier this week that Michael Cohen was seeking new representation, new legal counsel, indicating that his strategy may be changing. And that ties in here as well. Right. Cohen is looking for new lawyers, and specifically, we're told, he's looking for lawyers that have once worked with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. That's the office that's investigating him. That's not that uncommon. You want someone who knows how that office works, how the judges work. So he's seeking out that specialty and that knowledge where they might have relationships with prosecutors who are working on this case. Explain why Cohen cooperating could be a liability for the president. Well, Cohen has been Trump's fixer, right? He's worked for Trump for 10 years at the Trump Organization. He is his personal attorney, and he facilitated that $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels, which we know that investigators are looking at. That's one of the things that they looked for when the FBI raided Cohen's and home. And whether or not that was hush money. That's right. Whether the money was paid to stop Stormy Daniels from coming forward with an alleged affair she had with Trump a decade earlier, the White House has denied an affair ever took place. A month before the election. You know, that's that's the issue. It's not illegal to pay someone that money, but if you're using it as hush money with the political intent, right, you've got a legal problem there. A month before the election and Trump then reimbursed right. him was at a campaign donation. All right. Thank you for the through line on all of it. Stay with us. Uh, Renato, to you. What, what's your read here on this? Well, one thing I find unusual is why um, Cohen is talking to people about this. Obviously, he's used to being part of the Trump team. He feels isolated right now. He's concerned that he's going to be vulnerable, left out to, to dry, isn't going to get a pardon. What I wonder is whether or not he's putting out uh, this news in order to communicate to the Trump camp. I mean, he may be using all of us here to try to send a signal to them that he wants to, you know, he needs assurance from them uh, that he's going to get a pardon or he's going to be taken well, care of or he, else he's going to do this. He did not Usually get when that. somebody cooperates. I was just going to say, sorry to interrupt, he didn't get that this morning. Let's just take a moment to listen to what the president said this morning because he was asked uh, by this gaggle of reporters, one of the questions asked was about Michael Cohen. Here's the exchange with the president on that. I always liked Michael. No, I haven't spoken to Michael in a long time. Is he still your lawyer? No, he's not my lawyer. D dismissive, right? Exactly right. And I think he said at one point during that interview that he liked in past tense, using the past tense, that he liked Michael Cohen. Um, you know, not that he currently had any feelings towards him. Definitely trying to distance himself. Uh, you know, he had had a prior interview, I believe, on Fox and Friends where he, where the president said, you know, Cohen had his own business dealings. He was very much trying to distance himself from Cohen. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Cohen's a man who defined himself in many ways by his relationship with Donald Trump. You know, had that in his signature on his emails that he was the personal lawyer, lawyer to the, the president. So I think he feels isolated. And, you know, usually when you want to cooperate, you don't put the news out. You don't spread that news to, to all of your associates, family and friends to leak. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I wonder is whether or not uh, he is trying to get, uh, trying to play both sides here, trying to get the, a pardon uh, or something from the president uh, on the you other end. You know, Kara, after the FBI uh, raid of Cohen's uh, apartment, which was in all ways legal, even though the, you know, the president indicates otherwise, um, they appointed a, a basically special masters, an, an illegal entity body, to look through all of these documents that were seized and to determine which, if any, of the documents uh, were protected by attorney-client privilege. Some of them, a very small number, have been. How, how does that all play in here in terms of what Michael Cohen could actually say to investigators? And are there things that he could not say because they would be protected by that privilege? Uh, well, right. So if the, only the privilege holder, that would be the president, can waive attorney-client privilege. Okay. But if he was engaging in some sort of crime, then that would nullify that agreement. That's a really important point, that, that attorney-client privilege only holds unless it's indicative of a, of, of a crime. That's right. Potentially a federal crime here. 
That's right. And that, that document review, the deadline for that to finish is today. Okay. Uh, and so then we'll, you know, we'll see if Cohen finds new legal advisors, uh, where, that, where that development goes. But the government right. will start to get the fruits of the raid, as they have been, that, that has been rolling into them. And that will continue as this plays out. Uh, again, the breaking news, Michael Cohen, the president's personal fixer, as he's declared himself before, uh, former personal lawyer indicating, uh, sources tell our Kara Scannell that he is frustrated with the president, doesn't feel backed up by the president, and has indicated to family and friends that he is willing to cooperate with federal investigators to alleviate that pressure on himself that he is facing. Uh, major development. Kara, thank you for the reporting. Renato, appreciate the analysis as well.